everyone another story today. I was clearing my voice. <clears throat> the weather has changed and it's like, oh, anyway, today, another story at Cindy Harper Speaks. And it's a story about a real person, a poet, Eloise Greenfield, the music of poetry. And it's written by Laura Johnson. So let's dive into this. So Eloise Greenfield is a poet who writes for children. As you read about this poet, monitor your reading to check your understanding. Reread to clarify any difficult sections. So whenever we, we read, those are good tips to follow. So let's hear about this. This says many people had hard times during the Great Depression. Eloise Little was born in North Carolina in 1929. That was the year the Great Depression began. People living in the United States were having a difficult time. Many people were very poor. Many people lost their jobs and their homes. Banks closed and farms and stores went out of business. Eloise Little, she's the far right with her family in Pamel, North Carolina in 1941. So Eloise Little's family had very little money. Her father often worked on farms picking potatoes and tobacco. He worked hard, but he could not make enough money to support his family. So he went north to Washington, D.C. to look for a better job. After he saved enough money, Eloise and the rest of her family went to Washington to join him. When Eloise was nine, her family moved to a place in Washington called Langston Terrace. Houses and apartments in Langston Terrace were built for families who did not have much money. Eloise's sisters, Vera left and Viol right in Langston Terrace, 1949. So those are Eloise's sisters. Eloise liked Langston Terrace. It was a good place to live. She and her friends played baseball, table tennis, jacks, and hide and seek in the playground. They jumped rope, learned to sew, and took bus trips to the beach. Eloise always found time to read. There was a public library in Langston Terrace. Eloise thought that the best thing about Langston Terrace was that it was full of friends and neighbors who helped each other. They were one big family. That's great to live in a community where everyone is helping each other. These are Eloise's grandparents in the 1890s, grandfather, grandmother. Almost every summer, Eloise's family drove from Washington, D.C. to North Carolina to visit their relatives. During those vacations, vacations, Eloise and her cousins rode around the yard in carts pulled by goats. They played games and took long walks together. At night, Eloise and her family sat on the porch and listened to her grandfather tell stories. Eloise learned to love storytelling. This is Eloise with her father and brother. So here's Eloise. There's her father and brother. Her brother's name is Gerald in Langston Terrace in 1938. Wilbur, Eloise's brother, played bass viol in a jazz band. Here he is in 1976, not that long ago. Music was always a big part of Eloise's life. Her parents loved to listen to music on the radio. The whole family listened to jazz music and went to shows together. Her brother played in a jazz band. Eloise started to see the music in words. When Eloise finished high school, she went to college. After she finished college, she found a job in an office. In 1950, she married Robert Greenfield. They had two children named Steve and Monica. Eloise Greenfield sometimes felt bored at work. She started to write rhymes while she was in the office. She liked choosing words and arranging them on paper to say exactly what she meant. Eloise liked the sound of words. They sounded like music to her. Eloise Greenfield discovered that she really loved to write and wanted to become a writer. Eloise Little and Bobby Greenfield in 1948. So that's who she married. Bobby Greenfield.
Mrs. Greenfield had her first poem published in a newspaper in 1962. It was called To a Violin. The poem was about how much she loved the sound of the violin. A child reading in bed. Eloise Greenfield wanted her young children to read about African-American children like themselves who grew up in families with lots of love. She wanted them to read about people who helped their friends and neighbors. Eloise wanted her children to see themselves in poems and stories. Eloise didn't find enough of this kind of writing for children, so she began to write poems for children. Eloise used music in her poetry, and she wrote poetry about music. Her poem, Nathaniel's Rap, uses rap music. Another poem called My Daddy uses a kind of music called the blues. She said, there are times when I decide that I want to write about music. There are other times when I just hear the music of speech, and when I'm writing, it flows into the work. Mrs. Greenfield also pays attention to the things children are interested in. She wrote, for the love of the game, Michael Jordan and me. This two-part poem is about the popular basketball player, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, a star basketball player, is the subject of one of Greenfield's poems. When Eloise Greenfield talks with children, she asks them what kinds of things they like. She asks them how they feel about growing up. Then she writes poems and stories for them. She always writes about the feelings and topics that all people share. Love, sadness, joy, family, friends, and dreams. Eloise Greenfield has won many prizes for her poetry. She has earned these awards through hard work. She always tries to find the perfect words for every poem. Sometimes she writes a poem 20 times before she feels that it is finished. Mrs. Greenfield likes to tell her young readers that everyone can create something. She reminds them that everyone can write, make music, dance, and dream, and that everyone has a poem inside waiting to be expressed. This is a picture of Eloise Greenfield. Why did Eloise Greenfield start writing? She discovered that she loved to write after they moved and went to the library in Langston Terrace, she found that she loved writing and that's what she wanted to do. How was music important in writing her poems? She loved music. She said sometimes the words came from her, flowed from her like music. And when she heard music, words came. So she just has music in her. Why did Eloise Greenfield write poetry for children? because she, at the time, wanted to have books and poems that were written about African-Americans for her children to read. And she didn't find many things like that. So she started writing them herself. Number four, explain why you might want someone to write a poem about you and your family. Something to think about. Talk about that with your parent or one of your friends. If you liked this selection today, Eloise Greenfield, The Music of Poetry, please press like at the end and I'll see you next time. That's all for now at Cindy Harper Speaks. Bye.